Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. Once you found it, won't you declare, I have it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. Would you read silently as I read aloud? Then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You may be seated. Acts chapter 4, verse 11. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. And now he has become the cornerstone. I want to preach for a little while today in this our last service and the end of our series. I want to preach using as a subject, I'm tired of trying to force it. I'm tired of trying to force it. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them that's where I am. I'm just tired of trying to force it. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, said in his last speech, which was the commencement address at Stanford University, here's to the crazy one the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of the rules. You can't quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them, but the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. And this is a message for many of you who are here this morning for those of you who just can't find your space, you can't fit into any clique. You are hard to impress. You're not the garden variety kind of person who gets jealous. You don't see competition. And yet you find it difficult to connect with people who are not on your vibration. And 1 Samuel, when David was in the cave, hiding from Saul, it says he drew a motley crew of misfits. They are described as being distressed, in debt, and filled with discontentment. And David galvanized the misfits to come fight his battle. I want you to know you ought to be prepared that who God is going to help you link up with may be quirky in their demeanor. They do not fit the normatives of a Eurocentric standard of beauty. They are not trying to assimilate with the main culture. They don't do anything in order to be validated. And you really don't know how to take them because you're not used to genuine love. These are the misfits. I want you to write this down. It's going to blow your mind. I want you to think about it even after this worship encounter is over. 
Here's what I want you to write down. The hardest thing you can ever do in life is not be yourself. Would you write that down, please? The hardest thing you'll ever do in life is not be yourself. Millennial, somebody tweet that out for me. The hardest thing you can ever do in life is not be yourself. Assimilating to what society suggests is normal, can be an instrument of psychological torture. You become an actor on a stage full of pretenders. You pick up activities that align with your acceptance, but not with your passion. You wear clothes that are not consistent with your taste or body type. Regrettably, we live in a culture where to be different is an act of risk. When you are not living your truth, you end up dying a lie. A great black woman in the civil rights struggle said, it is not what they call you, it's what you answer to. Because you have refused to acknowledge you are a midfit, misfit, you have been forced to maintain outdated friendships. Because you will not come to peace with being a misfit, you have to choreograph conversations that are light and trivial and leave you with a headache. Because you do not acknowledge you are a misfit, you are a vol voluntarily, intentionally commit psychological suicide and die to your own genius. Because you don't acknowledge that you are a misfit, you do everything that is appropriate to appear sociable even when your smile is awkward and you are really at peace being alone. Kendrick Lamar said, all my life I had to fight. So a lot of your time ends up being spent by people you would rather not be bothered with because family members make you feel like there's something wrong with you because you cherish being alone. And so they keep forcing you. When you gonna have a family? When you gonna have kids? When you gonna settle down? And in the back of your mind, you saying, why? To be miserable like you? I, I don't want to live up to somebody else's standard of what happiness is supposed to look like when it is that I'm miserable. Claude McKay, that great Harlem Renaissance writer, wrote the poem, We Wear the Mask. And many of you are wearing a mask because you hide that you're a misfit. While everybody else enjoys going to movies, you would rather go see a play. Most people enjoy restaurants, but your pleasure is cooking up new recipes for yourself, even if there's nobody to taste it. They spend hours on Facebook, but you would rather have your face in a good book. The radio is inundated with trap music, but you best relax to jazz, Afro-punk, and worship songs, and you turn it up in your own car, even if nobody else understands the groove. It's because I like it, and you don't have to co-sign. They all dress out of Forever 21, Macy's, and Nordstrom's, but what you're looking for can only be found in vintage stores and online and in an off-beaten path, and you understand that this is not for everybody, but I don't dress for everybody. When I look in the mirror, I didn't do it for likes. I like it. So if anybody else likes it, that's just an added bonus, but I didn't do it to appease you. So people who don't understand the layers to the complexity of your personality don't understand why often you are spotted alone. It is not because you want to always be alone, but because you have discriminating tastes 
and you are arrogant about your company and you realize after so many failed attempts it is hard to find a match and you don't even mean in terms of intimate relationships you mean just in terms of friendships God I can't hear nobody and so they don't even understand I'm fine if I can just get two or three real people that understand my level of brokenness and flaws I don't need a bunch of people running in and out of my house the way that you are built watch this you don't even need your real friends to call you every day but whenever y'all catch back up y'all jump right in where y'all left off as if not a day has passed and you cool with that can I talk to some misfits in here as a matter of fact if you call me every day I'm suspicious cause I want to know why you ain't working on nothing why you ain't building nothing why you ain't dreaming about anything all your time is for me and so if that's how you are in your relationships how much more difficult is it for people in your intimate space so it's hard for you to adjust to people who spit game because the stuff that they think is impressive doesn't even register on your radar. God, I can't hear nobody. I need to have a meaningful, in-depth conversation that will tantalize my mind and will motivate my thinking. And because of that, I need you to ask me more than, what did you eat today? I can't hear nobody. I am of the mind frame. I don't want to sit in the car and debate for 20 minutes what restaurant we going to go to and do the exact same thing every Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I need somebody that can stretch the elasticity of my experience and say there is something more. I'm talking to real people who find no delight of walking through a mall three hours when you broke. You would rather begin to journal and dream and begin to plot and to strategize and think about what is my next step. What's the point of me going to dinner with you and you you're going to spend the whole time texting and tweeting and on Facebook and you can't even engage in meaningful dialogue about the depth of who I am as a person. The Bible asks a question that's almost rhetorical that nobody seems can answer. And that question is, how can two walk together unless they agree? I need you right where you are. Would you shake your neighbor by the hand and tell them I agree? Hallelujah. Come on, shake it like you got a strong handshake. I agree. Now, here's what's crazy, y'all, is they don't even know what they just agreed to. But let me now fill in the blank. They just agreed everything you prayed for is getting ready to come to pass. They just agreed that your enemies are going to be your footstool. They just agreed that everything God put in your heart is getting ready to be in your hair. I dare you to grab that neighbor real quick and tell him you better come into agreement with me. I agree that the worst is behind and the best is yet to come. And I got too much for me to walk by myself. And so the difficulty becomes that much more compounded, not for companionship. Huh. How do you find that match? Just have a conversation. We don't even know the art of conversation. You dating somebody through text. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. And when the phone rings, you think something is wrong because you don't even know the sound of their voice. Elbow the person beside to say, do you hear him preaching to you today? So you have difficulty having conversations. You get bored easy. It's hard for the mundane to hold your attention. You become irritated by those who have no drive. God, I can't hear nobody in here. It gets under your skin. 
when all they talking about is love and hip hop and I can't hear nobody in here. I, I don't want to see another picture of J-Lo. I, I want to know, what are you doing to change the dimension of your own existence and your own reality? And if you're not taking me up, you pulling me down. I need to know, can I find a match? They can hold conversation. They can hold my attention. They can hold my spirit. And in all of that, trying to find a match when the Bible told me through a warning label do not be unequally yoked God help me in here so you don't mind going out with me but can't pray with me God I can't hear nobody you comfortable sleeping with me but praying with me is too intimate God, I can't hear nobody in here. You can take me to eat, but you won't fast with me. Not for one day. It's hard trying to find a match. Can you imagine then how much more is the difficulty for those trying to find a kidney? I know I backdoored you. I am. Um, um, for those looking for bone marrow, how much more difficult is it for them when they realize they are the misfit? Because the kidney is only working at 60%. How do I find the match? Black people consistently find themselves at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to health disparity. We're already prone to the kidney-destroying illnesses of diabetes and high blood pressure. And although organ transplants can occur between races, matches are very difficult to come by from people who are not from your community. Dr. Marquette Faulkner of Meharry Medical School in Nashville, Tennessee, said if more African Americans signed up to be organ donors, their chances of receiving a match would improve. But black people are dying from curable diseases because too many in the community won't give. According to the U.S. Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network, whites account for 68% of organ donors, while we are only 14%. Notwithstanding that the amount of both races on the waiting list is just the same. You just missed what I just said. We are just 13% of the U.S. population, but we have the same amount of people on the organ waiting list. I need that to seep in for just one moment. Whites receive over half of all kidney transplant, and we receive less than a third. Diabetes, which is the leading cause of kidney failure, overworks people's kidneys until they wear out and high blood pressure damages the small vessels in the kidneys and they're no longer able to function. So we are dying in large measure, hear me, not because of Trump, but because of what's on the menu. More of us are dying at the hand of fried food than because of the Klan. Y'all not saying anything. More of us are dying from a salt shaker than a drive-by shooting. More of us are dying liquid deaths of liters of Pepsi and Coca-Cola that your body would reject water. To the right match, several things have to happen. I want you to write this down. In order for you to have the right match, you only need two things. In order for you to have the right match, you only need two things. And I pray that this will help you long after this day is over. I want you to share it with your family, with your friends, as I believe it will, in fact, be an emboldened benefit. The first thing that you need in order to have the right match, I want you to please write this down, is blood type. Everybody say that with me, blood type. All right. To have the right match, you have to have the right blood type. There are four different blood types. Write this down. You're going to be the smartest person at work tomorrow. Four different blood types. O, A, 
B and AB. Oh, those of you that got GEDs with me, zero, A, B. <laughs> Y'all will get that later. And AB are the four different blood types. Most popular is O. The rarest is AB. Those of you who come under the canopy of Christianity, your blood type is C. Pastor, you said there were only four. O, A, B, and A, B. Yes, but if you're under the canopy and the covering and the vow of Christianity, you got another blood type, which is C. That is the cross. The blood of the donor, I need you to write this down, the blood of the donor has to match the blood of the recipient. I'm coming. I said the blood of the donor has got to match the blood of the recipient. Y'all are slow. Y'all going to get it in a minute. I said the blood of the donor has got to match the blood of the recipient. Last time for the slow class. The blood of the donor has got to match the blood of the recipient. Here comes my grandmother. What can wipe away my sin? nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus can I talk about it it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley elbow the person beside you and tell them don't make me start talking about the blood hallelujah I need 50 of you right through here would you just say it out loud the blood the blood the blood I'm telling you when you get ready to get into a car accident and you feel like you're getting ready to lose control of the vehicle. All you got to do, the blood. I can't hear nobody when you get ready to walk in that courtroom. And it looks like the odds are stacked up against you. You better start calling for the blood. I told 930 when the death angel was passing by. When they put the blood on the doorpost. Then death could not come in the house. I dare somebody to lay hands on yourself. And say thank you for the blood. It was the blood that covered me. Hallelujah. So when he died, watch this. Whatever was in me was already in him. Because the blood type of the donor has got to match the recipient. The reason why I give God glory is because when he died, he already knew I was trifling. He already knew that I was broken. But in spite of what other people think they know about me, he died for me anyway. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, he died for me. I know this is old school, hot storefront preaching right through here. Here. But I need somebody in the room to look at your neighbor and say, what saved me was not a degree. What delivered me was not a car I drive. But on a hill far away, hallelujah, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. Is there anybody born again in here? that ought to shout over this that that's not how the story ends but three days three days later he got up with power in his hand some of y'all don't understand your assignment it is easier for you to find a match if there's somebody in your family the anointing on your life is not for a stranger but God put something on you to bring a family member out they've been looking at you and they know your circumstance and they can't believe in spite of y'all being reared in the same house you got a completely different perspective because it's in my blood I feel like preaching in here that's why I can't settle that's why I can't give my space to anybody it's in my blood I want better for myself I want more for my children I 
believe that greater is coming where'd you get that from it's in my blood I try to sit still but when that preacher calls the name of the man that died for me there's no way I can sit still I said I wasn't going to tell nobody but I just can't keep it to myself I dare somebody to look at your neighbor and say neighbor if you want to see me go crazy you better not call his name because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul cries hallelujah I thank him I thank him for saving me he saved me when I should have been dead he saved me when I didn't love myself I was sinking deep in sin very deeply stained within but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry from the water he lifted me safe is there anybody here that can say safe 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 am I I'm saved from what I used to be I'm saved from what I used to like I'm saved from what I used to be around I'm saved from what almost killed me I'm saved from my mother's addiction I'm saved from my father's brokenness I'm saved from the enemy's trap I'm saved from generational curses I'm saved from every disease I'm saved from what you think about me because the Lord is my shepherd I, I shall not walk Give somebody a high five and tell them I'm saved. I'm safe. Be seated, please. I'm safe. Oh, glory. I'm safe. Hallelujah. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. I'm safe. Be seated, I gotta tell you this. First thing you need for a right match is the blood type. Second thing, write this down, is HLA typing. Write this down, please. HLA typing. HLA typing is human leukocyte antigen. And that is uh, a tissue typing. Antigens, watch this, are proteins on the cells of the body. There are over 100 different antigens, but you only need six to have a match. Here's what I want you to have, is you have three from each parent. Three from your mom, three from your dad. In order for there to be a match or a higher probability, here's I need you to have this. In order for you to have a match, you have to carry. I want you to have this. You have to uh, carry in order to have a match. You both have to have the same substance. And many of you are sick. Because you keep getting connected to people who have no substance. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And the reason why you are burnt out is because you got to have strength for your whole circle. 
God, I can't hear nobody. So you spend all of your energy encouraging them, pouring into them, coaching them, and nobody pours back into you. So they don't understand why you hit a brick wall and you don't feel like being bothered. I like all of y'all. I really love you. I want the best for you. But I'm trying to ask God, when is somebody going to pour into me? Because I'm sick of always being a pitcher and I can't find nobody that's a cup. My prayer for you this year. I need you to lift up that hand, please. I feel glory coming. Ah, thank you, Holy God. My prayer for you is God is going to connect you to people with substance. Hallelujah. You got enough superficial and shallow friends. I, I need people in my life that's going to push me to dream. That's going to want me to want more for myself. God, connect me to somebody who got so I already know I'm cute. I already know I'm attractive. You got anything else you can say about me? I need something with substance. God said it's hard for you to find a match because the people who you want to donate to you have no substance you look crazy with a college degree letting a negro with a high school diploma run game God, God, I can't hear nobody. You look absolutely out of your mind. Letting somebody who ain't never built nothing give you constructive criticism on your dream. You must be mad to let one person mess up your day because they don't agree with what you got on. And the reason why they mad is because they can't afford it in the first place. You better get yourself together and get connected to somebody with substance. And in Acts chapter 4, we find misfits. Peter and John were um, preaching, to a rad, preaching a radical gospel. And the gospel that they're preaching is so radical, it's not preached in the synagogue. And they are arrested. I want to say a word to just some of you that can handle it. You know you are a misfit when the church don't know what to do with you. God, I can't hear nobody in here. They, you got a call on your life, but you don't need no microphone. I need real people. You, you know you anointed, but you ain't got to sit up front. And church folk don't know how to handle your anointing. I need to hear this. Peter and John didn't get arrested at the mall. They didn't get arrested at the supermarket. They got arrested at church for flowing in a gift that the church was not used to. God, I can't hear nobody. I'm talking to some real people in this room. I hope y'all will be honest. We like that. Come on, y'all been with me for a minute. I love God, but I'm getting sick of church. I love his word, but I ain't got the patience for politics and being in your clique and in your circle. God, I need you. Keep all of that. And I'm beginning there's something wrong with me because I keep going to church to church to church to church looking for something and I can't find the match God help me because I need substance and can I talk to misfits in the room I got to bar myself from becoming cynical God help me because I'm sitting there and I ain't feeling nothing and I'm seeing people shout over nothing and rejoice over nothing and in my spirit I'm saying when they going to say something when when they going to really minister to the need and address the issue God I need substance they preached watch this y'all and 5,000 joined Y'all not going to like this. 5,000 joined and then they got arrested. 
I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't even know if y'all in this room. They didn't arrest me till they saw my gift work. Arrest me before I help your stuff grow. I can't hear nobody. Y'all attacking me because I'm successful, because I'm proven, because I got a record. Why didn't you stop me before I helped you? And they arrested them. After 5,000 joined the church. I'm talking to a misfit in this room. Your greatest liability. Your greatest liability. I'm getting ready to help you. Your greatest liability is being successful. The thing that keeps blocking you is what you do works. If you were a failure, nobody would pay attention to you. But everything you touch begins to multiply. And mediocre, small-minded people can't stand you. And they don't even understand. I don't even work for this. This is my grace on my life. I wasn't trying to show nobody up. I wasn't trying to embarrass nobody. I wasn't auditioning for your position. I was being me. And being me, here's your shout, works for me. And every time I'm myself, I always see results. So if you can't handle it, get over it. I gotta be who God has called me. They asked him a critical question. Be seated. I'm coming to get you in one minute. They asked Peter, by what power do you do this? People who are always questioning your gift don't understand the power of God. Hallelujah. Look, look at your neighbor say, they don't know how I do this. They don't know how I do this. How I get out the bed with no hallelujah tear stains on my cheek how do you do this how you able to speak to the folk who you know was trying to set you up how do you do this how do you keep helping folk that you know will take you for granted how do you do this it's the power of God that's on my life They don't know how you're raising them kids. They don't know how you got run over, but you still look like a runaway model. God, I can't hear nobody. They, they got no idea how it is that you such a great mom, but never had an example. They got no idea how you are that groomed and that grace with no formal education. They got no idea how you keep your house up good when you were raised in the projects. How do you do this? Power of God is on me. And he says in verse number nine, if we're being called today to ask how we got a lame man back on his feet, please know what my source is. I'm only able to do it through Jesus. I want you to be seated just for two minutes. I'm gonna let you do whatever you want in three minutes. Be prepared to be questioned because the anointing on you is so heavy that it's getting ready to impact other people. And that's when you are a real threat. If everything you did was only to the benefit of you, the enemy wouldn't pay any attention to you. But God said, just for 800 of y'all that will receive the word of God from your pastor, this is the year you are going to become a target. God, I can't hear nobody. You are going to become a target? Why? Because you're going to help people get back on their feet. Hallelujah. You don't even need no credit. You don't need your name called. You don't need any recognition. And here's your best shout. The people who you're going to help first are the people in your family that despise the ground that you walk on. God said, I'm going to use you to get them back on their feet. 
because you didn't even know I was the midfit. And he says, um, empowerment, be in good company. I want you to be in good company because um, if you're anointed, you're not by yourself. Being ostracized, being rejected, being marginalized. It don't think that it's just you. The apostle said they, they rejected Jesus. Said he is the cornerstone that the builders rejected. God, I wish I had a church right through here. They really thought they could get it done without them. And just when they were getting ready to finish, they said, we missing a piece. We need the cornerstone to keep this together. And I'm speaking to those of you who today are being delivered from the spirit of rejection. God told me to tell you, you are the cornerstone. And it ain't going to be finished until they include you in the project. God, I can't hear nobody in here. I, I, I want to take just one flashback. Those of y'all that are old enough to watch the color purple, you remember Celia talking to Mr. Y'all remember that, don't you? She lifted up that crooked finger and she said, I may be black. I can't hear nobody. I may be ugly. But until you do right by me, nothing good is going to happen for you. And I believe for the misfits get ready that it don't matter what you look like it don't matter your background your mistakes until they do right by you nothing good is going to happen to them this is for the misfits the crazy ones the circle pegs trying to get in the square hole. God says, you found your match. I'm finally connecting you to where you're supposed to be. All of you who are in this room, you know I'm talking to you, it's been hard as all get up trying to find a circle, trying to find your tribe trying to find your space, trying to find where you belong. I want to pray for you. Would you lift up that hand, please? I'm praying that God finds your match. I ain't trying to hook you up with nobody. I said, I want him to find the match. Let me work in the field that matches my passion and my expertise. Lift up that hand, please. God, please surround me with some friends who will be as much as a friend to me as I am to them. I can't find no worshipers in here. God, find somebody I can dream with out loud. Well, I don't have to hide my fears that I can expose my vulnerability. God, match me up with the right group that won't get caught up in triviality. But God, I want to be connected with some world changers, with some history makers. God, help me to get somebody on their feet because there's grown people with low self-esteem, grown people that don't know their value, don't know their worth. Help me to be able to bless family members that wanted to see me down. God, I trust you for it. And God, if it is your will, I don't reckon many of you are going to keep your hands up. If it be your will, God, keep me by myself until you reveal the right match. I don't have the tolerance to waste any more time. I only need to be connected with something that's going somewhere that's meaningful for my life, for my destiny, and for my assignment. And those of you, your faith is connected to my faith. All of the misfits in the room, do me a favor, please. Open up your mouth and give God your best sound of thanksgiving. I 
can't hear anybody I said open up your mouth come on for the brave ones the creative ones the imaginative ones open up your mouth I want you to stand to your feet please You're fearfully, you're wonderfully made. In the Garden of Eden, there were a lot of creatures. Kangaroos, reindeers, rhinoceros, raccoon. And something was said over Adam that was spoken over you. Here's what I want you to know. What was said over Adam is spoken over you. It's not that you can't get nobody. The Lord said to Adam, and I looked and saw, here it is, nothing suitable. And a lot of you have exchanged availability for suitability. God, did y'all hear what I just said? Just because they're available don't mean it's suitable. Because you've got an assignment over your life. You've got a call that God is calling you to.